Hey, hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here coming to you from my office again today. We are getting ready for a really, really cool project. So this is gonna be project number two at this particular location. We are heading back to Putten Bay, Ohio, which is in Lake Erie. It's on an island, it's on South Bass Island. We had a blast out there just over a year ago now. We did an incredible project indoors. It was springtime, heading over on the ferry boat. Just a really unique experience. I've done that a bunch of different times at different locations around the country. Country, but this is my first time doing it actually in the Great Lakes. Kind of a cool experience, you know, heading out across, seeing that island off in the distance, and then just kind of getting ready for everything that was going to ensue after that. And a few of the challenge that we have because of that is because you're on an island, we have to bring everything across by this actual ferry boat. So all of our rocks, all of our stone, and all that stuff had to be shipped across back then. The new project that we're doing, we're gonna try to utilize all the stone found directly on the job site. So because it's an island, Renee, director of the facility, has a lot of connections with other contractors and people on the island. And she's friends with an excavating company. So when they're doing excavation work, they're actually uncovering boulders and things like that on the island. So this is just a big kind of an outcropping of limestone. So he's getting these mixed field stone type boulders, which are actually going to be perfect. What I love about it is it's going to tell the story that everything is indigenous to this particular island. So the only thing that we're going to be bringing across this time on the ferry boat is going to be the pumps, the piping, the rubber membranes, all the filtration and all that stuff as well as our entire team that's going to pull this project off. The other stuff that we're getting on the island is going to be some of the local driftwood as well as the beautiful and I mean beautiful beautiful river stones or beach pebbles I guess we should call them that are found all the way around the perimeter of the island and this is endless supplies so thankfully Renee has some incredible connections the excavating company is going to supply the excavator for us as well so now we don't have to worry about loading up a huge excavator and overloading this poor ferry boat that's taking everybody across the island so this is going to be a really really cool project remember when we were there last time we're actually working side by side with Coyote Peterson as well as the rest of Team Aquascape to do a really cool indoor feature for a turtle display and these are the type of features you know all of us love Greg Woodstock the pond guy got into the business originally because of his love of turtles so for us to do a small indoor feature like this is really really perfect and you know what I know it's looking phenomenal because Renee has been giving us a bunch of updates over the past year and everything is looking really really cool over there so I'm really excited about going back to actually see it again in person but also to start designing and building this brand new new feature. So here's a few pictures of the feature that we did. Again, working with some beautiful limestone and then some of those stumps and logs, which you know we love working with that type of stuff because it just personalizes it, but it also adds that extra element of authenticity. So it's very natural. And it's also, in my opinion, very, very important from a functional standpoint because it adds a secondary or tertiary surface for microorganisms and things like that to colonize. So I think it's a beautiful, beautiful addition for any type of a water feature. What we're going to do, we have approximately 30 feet in length from one side here all the way to the other. So we have a nice little space to work with. So it's gonna be more riverine, I guess, in appearance. But a couple things that I wanna make sure that we identify and that we take care of is we wanna have a bridge located on the feature. So I love the opportunity for crossing over the water, stepping stone, bridges, things like that. It just gives you a whole new perspective and there is nobody on the planet <laughs> that sees a bridge that does not want to cross it to see what's on the other side. And on the other side, it's actually a beautiful little ecosystem. So you're going to cross over this bridge, a few stepping stones, and you're going to head down an existing stairway that goes down to a recessed area, which is all just loaded with a native wood woodland area so it's a very deep shaded spot so it has a little bit of mystery to it so you're going to come out of the nature center you're going to cut across this kind of little grassy area you're going to interact with the water feature cross over the bridge down the stairs and then you're going to be greeted by this beautiful woodland canopy and all types of those indigenous plants which is exactly what nature centers should be doing so it's engaging your senses but it's also giving you glimpses of all these different little biosystems savanna type of an area than that deep woodland section and then those riparian habitats which we are going to be adding 
riparian habitat for those of you not familiar with that terminology that's that little area where the water meets the land and it's extremely important for all types of organisms from all those different incredible pollinators and birds and small mammals and things like that they're going to come to the shorelines of these areas for food for water for nesting for all the important things that they need to live and survive in today's harsh environments so by adding that little bridge it's going to add that little extra element that i think is going to be key the other thing that i want to address is there's an existing propane tank over here they have to have it obviously it's bringing them heat it's bringing them hot water and things like that into the facility but it kind of sticks out so i want to try to come up with a way to disguise it and what what better way to disguise it than during our excavation process, we're gonna be digging down several feet. I guarantee we're gonna hit bedrock because this island is just a huge chunk of limestone. So Renee's gonna go in with a series of metal spikes and she's gonna drive them down into the earth to see exactly what the depths where that bedrock is gonna be. So I'm hoping to get 24 to 30 inches deep, hoping. But what I wanna do is I wanna take all of that soil that we dig out and I'm gonna pile it up on the other side. And when I pile it up, it's gonna create a berm area and that berm is gonna kind of stretch out to create our waterfall, but it's also gonna to help to hide that propane tank. So now all of a sudden this propane tank is gonna get smaller because we're gonna be disguising the front of it with earth. The other thing that we do once we have that earthen mound built up, we're then gonna come on top of it with a series of plants and things like that, which as they grow over time will naturally disguise and kind of create a natural barrier for that mechanical component. So I'm always thinking of different viewing lanes and I want to create an experience for people that kind of takes them away from that everyday world that we always see of man-made. So I want to kind of get away from that and just show them the beauty and the nature of, the, of what a water feature will actually create. A few other things that I want to have here, we're going to have a waterfall kind of starting out up on top, a couple cascades coming down. We don't have a huge elevation change. We're going to probably have 24 to 30 inches of waterfall drops coming down. It's going to fall into a small plunge pool. I would love to have maybe a little beach access or a shallow area in one section where people can walk down to the water. I have to clear this with Renee though because I don't know if she's going to be comfortable with people having access to the water or not. So that's one of those things that we're going to have to discuss. So that's kind of a question mark on that one. We'll have that shallow fast moving water going under the bridge. Then we'll open it up into kind of a deep water area. I did draw in a few logs and stuff over here on this back section. Again as the same thing we did on the indoor feature. I want to add that natural wooden element for multiple reasons. I love the transition and also this is a wooded property so the back side of the property is loaded with all types of large trees and things like that so it'd be very natural for us to have a log or a series of logs inside the water feature just to give it that extra touch. Once we have an idea of what this overall design is gonna look like, this is our location. So here's that propane tank that we have to work with. And right over here where Brian is actually standing, that's where that staircase is going down into that wooded area. This picture was taken last April. You can see that there's barely any leaves on the trees at this point, so it'll be completely different this time when we go. Like I said, I'm gonna build up a mound of soil over here to disguise it waterfall coming down into a little plunge pool and then that pond system kind of stretching out over here a little bridge going across so that's the area that we have to work with because Renee wants to naturalize it and she wants to showcase native plants. We're going to work with some of her people. Some of the people on the board actually at the Nature Center are incredible horticulturists and botanists. So they have a ton of experience with native plantings. So we want to load this up with native plants just to create a better environment for all those pollinators and beneficial animals that we want to have come to this facility. So once we have that aquatic element in place. Now all we need to do is accentuate it with the right plant mixture and this will become a haven for wildlife. Here I am with Coyote Peterson and Greg Woodstock the pond guy. Coyote said he might be able to join up with us. I'm not 100% sure. He has a crazy busy schedule. Greg and I are busy but he's busier than us. He's coming back from filming with Bear Grylls in South America. He actually spends a lot of time in this area. He loves the beautiful ecosystems found around the Lake Erie Island 
Islands National Seashore. He grew up in that area, so it definitely is a sweet spot for him. And he was also the one that brought us here in the first place. So hopefully he's gonna meet up with us. Put in Bay, Ohio, again, we're gonna have a blast out here. And this is what I love about what we do. They get thousands and thousands of people every summer coming through the nature center. So I wanna make sure that we recreate an aquatic ecosystem that would help with the overall biodiversity of this incredible island and amazing place. We're gonna be heading out of here very, very quickly. So what I have to do is I gotta head down. Kevin and I are loading up our van and we are heading off to Putin Bay as we speak. So really, really cool stuff. Hopefully Renee will have some information for me once we arrive on the depths of that bedrock. It's gonna be a crazy whirlwind for the next few days over here. Stay tuned, really, really cool project coming up. It's gonna be awesome. Check this out. I don't know, for all of you that are not familiar with lotus leaves, very, very unique structure, but biomimicry is the concept of utilizing nature's time-tested strategies for survival. So lotus leaves actually have tiny little hairs on them, which keeps water actually from soaking into them. Look at that, it actually just, it just kind of rolls off. It actually kind of creates a really unique effect. And they're actually utilizing this same strategy for brand new rain jackets and rain gear and stuff like that because it repels water. So it's actually hydrophobic, pushes that water away. Again, we could learn from nature around every corner. We just gotta open our eyes. <laughs> 